Well, in business news, Nigeria's external reserves dropped by $1.46 billion between January and March of 2023. Figures obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria reveals that external reserves, which stood at $36.9 billion at the end of January 1st, 2023, fell to $35.53 billion as of the end of March, of th March 30, 2023. The CBN Governor, Mr. Gordon Emefile, explains that the decline in the external reserves is due to falling crude oil prices as global uncertainties persist. Recall that in 2022, the CBN launched a program tagged RT200FX program to boost forex supply in the a country through the non-oil sector in the next three to five years. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Export Processing Zones Authority says free trade zone scheme has generated a total of 35.1 billion naira for the government as customs duty in one year. Also, the sum of 408.3 million naira was remitted as pay as you earn taxes in 2021. Speaking on the free trade zone scheme, the managing director, NEPSA, Mr. Desoji and Deshuba, commended the scheme for a notable turnaround in the last seven years creating a viable revenue option to reduce over-dependency on downstream sector. The NEPSA boss further added that the scheme is uh, also generated a total of 19,125 employment with over 3,000 job skills. Nigeria's call for an inclusive, equitable, fair and universally beneficial international tax system towards the attainment of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals making the call on behalf of the country at the Economic and Social Council United Nations headquarters in New York is Mr. Mohamed Nami, the executive chairman of the FRS, that's Federal Inland Revenue Service. Mr. Nami noted that Nigeria is concerned about a global maxim minimum tax as put forward by the OECD inclusive framework because of its low rates and the way it, is, it was negotiated to benefit the home countries of multinationals. He also says that Nigeria looks forward to uh, an enforcement mechanism, on enforcement mechanisms for the binding multilateral tax convention, noting that the challenges that developed uh, and developing countries have experienced with investment treaty arbitration. Well, food insecurity is still a major global concern as one billion people are suffering from starvation under a malnutrition. However, African food insecurity has been attributed to a driven mainly by armed conflict, drought and economic turmoil, as well as uh, the Ukraine conflict, which, making, uh, which is making a dire situation uh, even worse. A researcher and agribusiness economist, Dr. Matthew Ojo, who joined us on Business Nigeria from the United Kingdom, harps on the fact that government must take deliberate actions to improve productivity across Nigeria's agricultural value chain. There was a report that came from the uh, uh, World Bank Global Report Food Crisis that talked about up to 205 million, okay, likely to face acute food insecurity and needing assistance in about 45 countries. And so when you just oppose that report with the one that is just released by, by the United Nations, you understand that it's not, it's not a new uh, development. It's just that Africans, as we are, need to start looking at what we need to do differently from all we've been doing uh, before now. So if you have that kind of a report coming from United Nations, and it's also talking about Africa, then you need to now look inward and ask, why is this happening as it concerns, you know, Africa, where we have no large population of, 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 of Africans involved in agriculture. Nigeria, for example, you know, statistics tells us up to 70% of the citizens are involved in, in agriculture. So what, what, what is the challenge and what is the issue? If you also remember that the United Nations uh, uh, agenda 2030, where you have the 17 uh, sustainable development goals. Poverty, okay, is the number one goal, followed closely by hunger. It says, you know, um, no poverty, that's goal number one, and zero hunger, goal number two. And if you look at these two, those, these are the two major issues that, is, that are troubling Africa. You have poverty and you have food issues, food insecurity. So the real issue here 
is not just the concern about poverty in, in Africa, but the problem of food security, which has constantly been a major challenge uh, for the continent. Dr. Ojo there speaking around food security. Asian Pacific markets rose largely today as investors further digested key manufacturing data in the region. Also a potentially ominous sign for global inflation just days after slowdown in U.S. price data had boosted market optimism. S&P 500 features dipped 0.3%. Nasdaq features lost 0.06%. Eurostock 50 features is 0.1%. FTSE features added 0.1%. MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares out of Japan is 0.4%. Chinese blue chips uh, rose 0.7%. Brushing of S&P 500 survey of manufacturers, which showed a surprise drop in sentiments to 50 in March. Japan's Nikkei air dropped 0.5%. The U.S. dollar was broadly higher as fears over inflation resurfaced after a surprise by major oil producers to cut production further, with trade waggering the Federal Reserves may need to increase interest rates. At its next meeting, the euro was down 0.44% to $1.079 after touching a one-week low of $1.078, while the Japanese yen weakened at 0.46% to $133.41 per dollar. Sterling was $1.22 down 0.45%. The dollar rose 0.32% against the Swiss franc. The dollar index, which measures the U.S., Currency against six pairs was 0.08% higher, with 103.01 breaking past 103 for the first time in a week. The currency strategist at OCBS in Singapore, Mr. Christopher Wong, confirms that the expectations are that the Fed is nearing the end of the tightening circle while receding broader contagion risk. The oil price gain due to the surprise production cuts is a fresh risk to inflation. Asia's factory activities weaken in March as soft overseas demand hot outputs, suggesting a deteriorating global outlook will remain a drag on the region's recovery and keep policymakers on their toes. China's Caxin SMP Global Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index stood at 50.0 in March, much lower than the market forecast of 51.7, below February 51.6. While South Korea PMI fell 47.6 in March from 48.5 in February, contracting at fastest pace in six months as exports order took a hit from weak global demand. Japan's PMI stood at 49.2 in March, up from February's 47.7, but remaining the 50 treasuries major orders contracted for a ninth consecutive month, according to an economist at Capital Economics, Mr. Shivran Tando. He noted that the global Growth uh, set to remain weak in the coming quarters. Manufacturing outputs in Asia will remain under pressure. Crude oil prices surged today, posting the biggest daily rise in nearly a year after a surprise announcement by OPEC Plus to cut more production jolted markets. Now, Saudi Arabia and other OPEC Plus oil producers announced voluntary cuts to their production amounting to around 1.15 million barrels per day in a surprise move aimed at supporting market stability. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude rose to sell at $79.56 with an upward price margin of 5.14%. Brent also experienced an uptick of 5.26% to sell at $84.09 per barrel. Bonnie Light sells at $79.33 with an upsurge of 0.93%. And now for the crude oil, for the OPEC basket, crude oil dealers are offering $77.53 with a downward price margin of 0.13%.